company is known by the people it keeps. These are the people, 100,000 of them, by whom General Dynamics is known. Some are clerks and some are chemists. One in every eight is an engineer. Most are craftsmen, commanding the varied skills and specialties demanded by today's expanding technology. But whatever their specialty, all of our people contribute to the creative process, which is General Dynamics' sole reason for being. Because engineering is our business, our only business. Our work is concentrated in four major areas of engineering achievement. Marine systems, electronics, aerospace development, and industrial resources. In these four fields, we specialize in the big, technology-stretching projects that create whole new frontiers in the state of the art. From the heart of the earth to the heart of the electron, from deep sea to deep space, almost every major project we've ever undertaken was technically impossible at the time we started work on it. To master challenges like these, the people by whom we are known must be the best there are. so must the company they keep. General Dynamics is a young corporation with a history that stretches back into the 19th century. The company that formed the nucleus of our modern organization built America's first submarine, the Holland, in 1900. In World War I and World War II, a constant stream of increasingly advanced undersea vessels poured from our production ways. More submarines for the Navy than any other private builder. With each challenge met, we earned a more stringent task until we faced the severest test of all, the nuclear submarine. General Dynamics built the first nuclear sub, the Nautilus, in 1955. Since then, we have delivered dozens of nuclear subs to the fleet including more than a third of all our Polaris submarines. We built the prototype of almost every new class of nuclear sub. Each one was a unique engineering challenge. Power source, life support system, navigation equipment, fire control, all fantastically complex, all interwoven create one of the most formidable defense systems in the free world. The varied resources of many of our divisions are focused with particular intensity on the problem of anti-submarine warfare. We have under construction or contract a substantial number of attack submarines, a new class, specially designed to seek out and destroy enemy subs. The design of the quiet sub, another step forward in the submarine's evolution, also is our commission. We are building the world's first ocean laboratory for testing sonar systems. 
The Rains will be part of the Navy's Atlantic Undersea Test and Evaluation Center, AUTEC. It will calibrate and analyze all the sonar on all the ships and subs of the British and U.S. navies. As part of the AUTEC project, we built the research and work submersible Turtle. Its sister submersible, Seacliff, will support research activities at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Seacliff and Turtle join other General Dynamics submersibles at work around the world for the government, science, and industry. Exploring an entirely different area of oceanographic research is this giant buoy, moored, untended, sometimes thousands of miles from land. These floating data stations can collect and transmit constant meteorological reports from the central oceans, where much of the world's weather is formed. of our long and varied experience in the total ocean environment is devoted to constructing modern surface ships. methods reflect our own developments in aerospace technology. Shapes for hull plates and other design elements are determined and controlled by computer. Work flows in a continuous line from raw material storage to completed hull. Cleaning and painting operations that once took days are now accomplished in hours with automated shot blasting and a climatically controlled painting facility. Huge ship sections weighing up to 150 tons are built on land and dropped into place when completed. So exact is the planning that much of the piping and wiring can be installed in advance, saving additional valuable time in the building dock. Soon, these sophisticated techniques will be applied to the building of our first commercial cargo vessels. Initially, three of these unique barge-carrying CB transports will be constructed. But our principal responsibility is, and will continue to be, the creation of new classes of Navy ships, like this fleet replenishment vessel. Also coming off our ways, are dock landing ships, ammunition ships, and highly complex tenders for nuclear attack submarines. Almost as soon as the inventiveness of man harnessed the power of the electron to make possible instantaneous voice communication over vast distances, we were there. First with the telephone, then with radio. We made it easier and easier to exchange information and ideas. But today, mankind is faced with a flood of information which, by its sheer volume, threatens to inundate him. To process greater quantities of information at ever-increasing speed, Man has created the computer. Now, he must devise new ways to make readable, print, distribute, and store the flood of information generated by his fast-moving servant. The solution? Use the electron to harness the rush of electronic information. The system is called Micromation, and it translates the computer's output into readable text or graphics as fast as the computer itself can produce it. With a unique cathode ray tube, a high-speed camera and microfilm, the computer's most fleeting thought 
can be preserved for later use. 16,000 pages of computer information. Conventional printers would need half a day to record it, and the stack of paper would be 15 feet high. With micromation, the same job takes an hour, and the result can be carried in one hand. Micromation saves fortunes in time and money for banks, insurance companies, large retailers. But most important, it frees their computers to compute full speed, full time, and not work as printing presses. Other uses of the electron are as varied as the universe. Tracking. Three ships created especially to help monitor and control the Apollo moon missions. General Dynamics put the whole system together. communications, telephone equipment for central exchanges, offices, homes across the nation, radio on the battlefield, where communication is a life and death matter. Single sideband transmitter receivers for teletype and voice, used by all three services Units like these have provided thousands of clear, secure communications channels under the most demanding circumstances imaginable. And to help protect our forces against sneak attack, a radar system weighing only 10 pounds. In an advanced stage of development, FLAR, forward-looking, low-altitude radar. Weighing less than 100 pounds, this unit provides simultaneous ground mapping, terrain avoidance, and terrain following operations in a single lightweight package. General Dynamics has been a part of aerospace development since the earliest days. We were among the pioneers and have grown steadily with the industry. We built pace-setting aircraft like the Catalina, the Liberator, the B-36, the F-106, and the B-58. For years, we have created the planes that were the best of their era. Today, the frontiers of flight still are ours. We were asked to build the world's most advanced attack aircraft, a plane that can go anywhere, anytime, that can climb 10 miles into the sky and fly at two and one half times the speed of sound, that can drop down to treetop level and deliver any kind of weapon with absolute precision in total darkness, supersonically. In essence, to take a vision and give it substance. It took time and talent and hard work. arsenal of defense. The key to the F-111's combination of speed, range, and altitude is its variable sweep wing. The pilot changes the angle of the wing in flight to create the most efficient aircraft design for his mission. He can soar with wings extended for long range at moderate speeds or sweep them back streak through the sky at better than 1,500 miles an hour. Its inertial navigation system 
would put the F-111 right on target after hundreds of miles of complex maneuvering. Even in zero visibility, it can penetrate deep into enemy territory, undetected, using its terrain-following radar to skim the Earth below the vision of enemy defenses. Other challenges of flight, other responses. The CL-84, a tilt-wing vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Its prototype has been evaluated in more than 300 flights. Production versions will now be tested by the Canadian Armed Forces. It has capabilities of a helicopter and can fly conventionally at 300 miles an hour. Important characteristics in difficult terrain or in combat. CL-215, specially designed to fight forest fires. 20 in production for Quebec, 10 for France. More to come. We fill the sky with aircraft. And when the sky is no longer the limit, we make the leap into space. in space exploration, our Atlas Space Launch Vehicle continues its outstanding record of reliability and precision. Coupled with the hydrogen-fueled Centaur upper stage, another product of General Dynamics engineering, the Atlas SLV launched the first probes in the Mariner Mars series. upgrade the Navy's defensive capabilities. And the shoulder-fired Red Eye, now in production for the Army and Marines. It lets the infantryman strike back at low-flying aircraft. supplying the Midwest's builders with the finest construction materials economically and on time. Today, the heartland of America is still producing and building and growing and still calling on General Dynamics to find new ways to meet new responsibilities better. In fast-moving, fast-growing Chicago, the need is for concrete, at this moment, more perishable than whipped cream. We follow split-second schedules to get it on the job. No sooner, no later than requested. Builders need steel, tons of it. We produce lime for steel, tons of it. We're the largest in the nation. material comes from our own quarries. Automation advances the complex job of processing the lime with absolute precision. The steel industry, now using oxygen furnaces, demands higher quality calcium lime than ever before. Top grade lime is also used for a spectrum of non-metal applications. from the surface and from deep inside the earth. We are one of Illinois' most important producers of deep mine coal. This is the big wheel, 12 stories high and longer than a football field. We use it for surface coal mining. It can 
take on a 30-foot high chunk in one bite and move enough earth in an hour to fill nine farm silos. The stripping shovel eats 70 cubic yards at a scoop to lay bare the coal seam. And out comes the coal. Moving on to be automatically purified, graded, sized, and sorted to a variety of specifications. But what about the torn up land left in the wake of our big brute force machines? Before we extracted the coal, many of these 18,000 acres were idle and unproductive. Today, the land is rich with orchards and pine forests. We call the project New Lands. It is a policy of pre-planned reclamation we've followed for more than 30 years. For the people of General Dynamics, the challenges of yesterday and today are merely prologue. Engineers and scientists are already focusing their energies and inventiveness on projects that will form the basis for the technology of the 70s and 80s. Weight in aircraft, noise in submarines, increasing miniaturization in electronics, more economical resources. At the moment, many of our answers are only paper. But in a month or a year, or a decade, they will emerge as finished products in steel and aluminum, titanium and boron, and even newer materials that do not yet exist. Our people are working today on the problems of tomorrow to assure that the front rank of accomplishment will continue to be occupied in the future by General Dynamics, the company they keep.